Okay, everybody, this is welcome to the December version of the World Palm Beach Lovely Educational Advisory Board. And this is going to be the best meeting ever, right, kids? Yeah. That's it, that's it. We will have more fun than everybody today, and it's only because of you, that's why. So let's do a Pledge of Allegiance, please. I pledge allegiance to the It don't get any better than that. All right. All right, let's get this thing happening here. Roll call, please, Ms. Jacqueline. Thank you, Chairman. Chairman Dr. Bill Tolomer. I am here, present, and ready for action. <laughs> Vice Chair Brittany Lee. Here. Krista Clark. Present. Lisa Ryan. Present. Denise Lawrence. Present. Here. Alexandra Agate. Present. And Councilman Decamara. Here. Okay, Principal. This is going to be exciting. So it's your show. Let's get December kicked off right. I am very excited to announce the Pentatonic Pride is here to perform for us today. It is directed by Jacqueline Pawali.
know, or any, but we do have some people who are willing to teach us some things.
Listen, that was a parents you would be so proud. What great kids. Thank you. Thanks, kids. Way to go. Thank you. The, the councilman may want to take them to sing that appreciation thing to the council some days. Right? Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> can, can you get me the lyrics to that, please? <laughs> I don't think you guys hear that too often, do you? Not, not often. <laughs> oh, what great energy. So good to see. Great we miss that. Great to have that. Yeah. Thank you all for coming. Have a happy holiday, everybody. Yeah, Thank you, parents. Holiday. We really appreciate you. Uh-oh, we got a dancer here. Go ahead, big guy. It's all you. Show me how. Go ahead. <laughs> Oh, we can see you. Don't worry. You're, there's nowhere to hide in here. There's nowhere to hide in here. <laughs> Principal model, the world needs more of that. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, you're. We're still living your dream here, so let's yeah. go. Yep. Okay. Yay. Well, you can't beat that energy. So um, I am really excited that we are somewhat back in action. So it's so exciting. Here we go. Yay. I'm the new principal of H.L. Johnson. Yeah. You are not new anymore. You wore that out last spring. It's not, yeah, you are true. the principal of H.L. Johnson. It's my first time presenting here at the Education Advisory Board as the principal, which is really, really exciting. Um, it will be a year in January, which I can't believe, so it has gone by very quickly. Here we go. So just a little bit about myself. I, hi, I'm Crystal Amato-Kacharski, and this picture is my husband, Nick, and my son, Cannon. And if you are new to the Education Advisory Board, Dr. Jesus Armas, who was the principal at Royal Palmach High School for 11 or 12 years. I should probably know that by heart. Um, but he is my mentor. And he really helped me in my leadership journey. And so I have to mention him if I'm introducing myself. And then my son, which I, so you saw a picture of, but not only is being a principal a career goal, but it's also I get to be my son's principal. So it is also a personal goal. And you can't beat that. So that's really exciting. And then one more thing about me is I grew up in Royal Palm Beach, and so I attended H.L. Johnson Elementary. So that is me and my mom on the screen um, at my first day of kindergarten in the largest school in Florida at the time. And um, so that's really, really special and just talks about Royal Palm education and how amazing it is. And look, who knew a little girl from Royal Palm would be a principal? So here we are. Great. Yes. And saying, sorry, one more thing with Dr. Armis, and I know Ms. Fleming is here, so it's very exciting. So we all get to meet her um, today as well. But Dr. Armis has long presentations, and I'm, I tried to make it short, but I feel like this is going to be a long night. So <laughs> here we go. Okay, we got to have, we got to have, I thought we were done with that. What happened? We were done with that. I'm so sorry. Okay. Oh, so my I'm Val, you couldn't, man. <laughs> Yes, um, H.L. Johnson Elementary envisions a dynamic, collaborative, multicultural community where education and lifelong learning are valued and supported and all learners reach their highest potential and succeed in the global economy. So, um, so that's our vision at H.L. Johnson. But in order for that all to happen, we need to have safety. So safety is always our number one uh, because without safety, the learning can't even take place. So I just want to tell you some about what we do at H.L. Johnson to keep our school and students safe. First, it's campus. We have to keep our campus safe. So um, when we open up the building for arrival, we do have three entrances. We have our walker and biker gate, we have the bus loop, and then we have the car loop. So those are the three areas. All of those are manned by our staff at H.L. Johnson, along with school, our school police, our school resource officer. From there, after we have arrival and we close down all of those entrances, we have a single point of entry. And, um, and everything comes through at the main office at that point. Then any transitions happening on our campus, we do keep all the gates closed and locked, and it happens with inside the campus. But our classes, as they transition 
from their class to recess to fine arts to lunch, all of that is supervised by their homeroom teacher. If we have students that for some reason need to go to the restroom or to the main office, if they are in K through two, it is a three person buddy system. And if they are in third through fifth, it is one single person unless going to the clinic. And if they're going to the clinic, then it turns back into a three person system. So that is how transitions work at HL Johnson. Dismissal, those three gates ex, um, that we have in arrival um, it also becomes an exit. And again, we have our security staff there. They keep their head on a swivel. We're always looking for different things. Um, we are trained professionals, but um, things that we're looking for is first arrival and exiting safely. But on top of that, there are lots of situations that happen. So we want to make sure that those interactions, we are against bullying. So those things are looked for. Also any conflicts. So all of our staff is trained to do that. Um, as far as administration and school resource officers, we do daily perimeter checks along with door checks. It could happen any time throughout the day, but we want to test ourselves. So that is a daily interaction at HL Johnson. And then on top of that, we have monthly monitoring, and that's where, and I'm sorry, I did not introduce her. The assistant principal, Danielle Agudello, is here. Yay! <laughs> I will talk about her a little later. Um, and so um, she will do the checks, I will do the checks and school resource officer, and then we come together and we talk about what we see, and we just want to make sure that all of our protocols and procedures are working the way they're supposed to be working, and if not, we need to fix it immediately. So that happens at HL Johnson. And then threat assessment, um, it is a term that you're going to hear. Unfortunately, there was a tragedy, uh, you know, in Michigan. I, there was another tragedy at a college campus, but that is a reality now. And so at any time that there is a threat, um, you know, if it's substantial or not, then we take it very seriously. And so threat assessment at any time can happen on our campus, and that involves the school resource officer, the assistant principal, me, um, the school counselor, our behavioral health professional, a teacher on campus, and we come together and we discuss what is going on and we launch an investigation, and then from there we move um, to different procedures depending on what situation is happening. And, um, and every situation is different, so every situation is handled differently. So that is threat assessment. And then drills. Uh, all schools in Palm Beach County do have our safety drills. I am an ex-soccer player, so I believe you um, what practice makes permanent. And so we make sure that we are practicing in the way we perform, and that's the only way it's going to come permanent. And coming from high school to elementary school, the first code read, drill was a little bit, I did feel like I was tearing up a little, because in high school we do it all the time, I don't think about it, we get it done, but in those little ones, but they know what to do, and they're in their spots, and we talk about it, and they are prepared if a situation were to occur. Safety also includes social emotional. At uh, HL Johnson, this could be the teacher, the parent, or the student needing help, obviously it's all geared towards the student, but anyone can reach out and get services for their child or for themselves if they want to advocate for themselves. And if a teacher sees something, they're going to say something. And we do morning meetings every morning to check on social emotional well-being. So that is a part of the entire campus at the same exact time every single day. We also have group and individual counseling depending on what's needed. Our behavior health professional is very is all about affirmations and mantras. This could be daily, this could be weekly. The whole point is to stop the negative thought, stop the negative talk. We want to train our positive talk. You can do it. And that growth mindset. So we are building that. So this is her affirmation wall. You can take what you need or you can leave a note for someone else that may need something and you might be able to offer that to someone else. We have one-on-ones. Um, not everyone needs a counseling session or a complete counseling management plan. So we do have one-on-ones if you're <coughs> having a bad day and you just need to talk to someone. We have check-ins. So after counseling sessions, we do check-ins just to make sure that you are good and if you need to start counseling again or if you want to join a group counseling, you can do that. And we have check-ins just to make sure you're still on the right path. And then the... Newest part of our safety is COVID and flu. I added in there. Um, so COVID, hand washing, clean and disinfect high touch surfaces regularly, monitor daily health. Please make sure that you're feeling, you're not having any symptoms, I should say. Um, social distance when possible, 
masks are strongly encouraged throughout campus, and that is our safety at H.L. Johnson. H.L. Johnson is a STEAM school, which is science, technology, engineering, arts, and mathematics. We're also a Cambridge primary school. Uh, if you don't know much about Cambridge, um, to let you know, it is a, it's basically a program, and all of these are school-wide, so every student gets these. It's a program that lends to critical thinking and also really jumping into the subject area and seeing it from all different sides. So it is a, um, it's a training that our teachers have to ensure that our students will be well-rounded, balanced, and also be able to take advanced courses in middle school and then in high school. Our Cambridge primary turns into ACE, which ACE is college-ready classes in high school, and you can also earn an ACE diploma in high school. And then we are also a green school of excellence. We always think about 21st century skills. There are three areas we focus on. Of course, our choice programs that are school-wide all have to do with 21st century skills, STEAM, Cambridge, and a Green School of Excellence. But the three areas we focus on are learning skills, so the four Cs, critical thinking, communication, collaboration, and creativity. Our literacy skills, our information literacy, that's le learning to read and then writing. Media literacy, which is being able to interpret what you're seeing. So a commercial could be media, radio, a YouTube video. Um, what are they trying to portray to me? Why are they portraying to this? It's teaching those skills. And then technology literacy is why would they come up with, what creative person came up with this? So really looking at all the ac uh, aspects of literacy. And then life skills, uh, what we focus on at H.L. Johnson is flexibility, initiative, social skills, productivity, and leadership. And again, we're focusing on that growth mindset. We are also international and intercultural understanding. So Cambridge is an international program and recognized internationally. But also, we believe in equity and access. We are a welcoming and inclusive school. And we are honoring and trying to learn about as many cultures as we can because we are a diverse uh, village. And we want to make sure that we all are respecting each other's cultures and being able to work together and grow together in a community. And then global awareness, being a green school of excellence. There's a few different pictures here. So the one with the pink lights, that's our germination station. And that happens within our cafeteria. And that's our K through two's focus. So they take seedlings and they grow them into small plants. So that is their job. It takes about two weeks to get small plants. Then from there, if you look down at the bottom, is our hydroponics. It's a hydroponics lab that we have made. And from there, we take those small plants and try to grow them a little bit bigger. And then we have just started a food forest this year. So those are the Vigo beds um, that are kind of with the mulch. And we are planting um, many different things. But we're hoping to have a food forest and do food to cafeteria. So that is the goal. So we're growing lettuce right now. And, um, and then some of the lettuce will be served in our cafeteria. We cannot serve all of our students. But we hope to eventually get there. We also have strawberries going right now, so we're trying to make salads with strawberries, and then students can see it from a seedling all the way through to eating it at lunch. So that's the idea. And we're also, because we're a green school of excellence, we have Green Day every month, the first Thursday of every month, and we recycle things that you cannot recycle at home. So for instance, right now we're probably doing a lot of ordering from Amazon, and you get those bags, those Amazon bags. Those are actually recyclable, but you can't recycle them at home. So we have a program where um, you bring those in that once a month, and you tell us who your homeroom teacher is, and um, and the winning teacher from K through two, and then three through five gets a special parking lot, and um, we also are taking care of, I mean, special parking spots, and we are also taking care of the environment. Other things that are um, non-recyclable, well, recyclable, but you can't do it at home, are the little muffins, the little bites muffins, those wrappers you cannot recycle at home, along with pens, paint supplies, all the plastic things from um, crafts. You can't recycle those at home. And toothbrushes, but we took off toothbrushes because it's not a good time to be recycling toothbrushes. And then there's LOL packaging. LOL um, are a big deal to our elementary students. And so all the packaging are also recyclable. So it's lots of different items along with grocery bags, bread bags that your bread comes in. All of that you cannot recycle at home. So we bring that into H.L. Johnson and we weigh it and once a month um, the last one was 286 pounds. As you know, those things aren't heavy. So for our whole school to be able to do that, and each month that's about our average. 
demographics at H.L. Johnson. So we currently have 789 students, 21 more than last year. Yes, I will take it. Uh, our students, this is our demographic breakdown, 5% are Asian, 22% are black, 28% are Hispanic, 5% multi-race, 41% white, 6% English language learner, 36% students with disabilities, and 52% free and reduced lunch. And that's a pie graph, I'm very visual, so I had to add it in. And then for our staff is 1% Asian, 9% black, 20% Hispanic, 68% white, and we average 11 years of teaching experience at H.L. Johnson. Okay, so what does that tell you? <laughs> what does this tell me? Yeah, it's great to see it, but what does it mean? So for me, um, I'm, well, first of all, I'm looking, the number one thing I look at right this moment is my staff. So um, I would like to add more of my staff to look just like my student dynamic and my uh, breakdown because I want a child to be able to look at their the teachers and the people around them and see themselves and so that's number one so that's number one thing I look at when I'm just looking right off the bat um, and then from there it's you know test scores and things like that and who is doing what in different areas and why are we meeting the needs of maybe this background and not the needs of another background so so that's usually the second thing I look at when I'm looking at demographics and you get 21 students, is it just 21, or is it what type of 21? Right. What do you, what do you mean? Sorry. When I increase the 21 yep. students? Yep. Oh, yep. I'm not sure. I did not break it down. My new 21 students. You, um, you, you, but you I didn't break it down, you? <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, I know. I should. I have not. I'm not exactly sure of the 21. I know my Hispanic population has gone up a little bit more this year than last year, but I'm not exactly sure if that is 21 students without – you know, in the grade, or if that's my kindergarten students that came in. Yeah, we have like so. 24,000 people a day moving here. Really? In rural Palm? Or in Palm Not County? outside ourselves, in our state here, but okay. we had about 6,000. So it's usually it started with 1,000. So the new influx, it's not just those that are retiring, except you go to the airport, you'll see those. <laughs> but it's those that are bringing young families who come from other states that, you know, learn something different. Right. So I, I don't know if we've done anything proactively to reach out to say, hey, because, you know, you know how awesome school systems are here. So this is a selling point. It's an economic selling point. There's also a, a real influx of how you introduce them and, matri and, and matriculate them through what you have already. So I just wonder if anybody's thought about that yet. So that was just a question. No, I know in the beginning of the year, we, you know, we have the best region. Um, so, <laughs> so we did a lot of um, marketing for anyone that was new or for someone that mm -hmm. was not coming into you know, our public school system, we did make very personalized, like, hey, we're your zone school, you're in private school, or you're in virtual school, please come visit us, uh, get to know us as your school. So all of the elementary schools did that this sh the beginning of this year, or well, over the summer. Yeah, it's just a nice recruiting fertile area that it's out there if we tend to reach out. So just give me some more details. Yeah, thank you. I believe Angel Johnson is a family. Uh, it's a family feel, and growing up in rural Palm, I want to keep it a family feel. So this is just backgrounds. So went to Angel Johnson as a child as far as instructional staff. There are eight other staff members besides me that attended Angel Johnson. A child that currently attends Angel Johnson, 24 staff members currently have a child there, and which equals 33 children. A child that attended Angel Johnson when they're in elementary. So these are too old to be at elementary, but did attend. We have 32 staff members currently on our staff, and which equals 57 children, technically, that I know of for staff that are currently at H.L. Johnson. And then family members that attended H.L. Johnson, we have eight staff members that had 16, such as nieces, nephews, grandchildren. So just to tell you a little bit, we're trying to keep that family feel. So Val, this is part of the interview process. Okay, how many kids do you have to go to H.L.? Come on. Right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're recruiting this, right? This is exactly. good. Exactly. This is another part of the I like it, I like it. <laughs> All right, so rewards, events, and fun. So I'm taking a little bit of a different um, way to tell you about H.L. Johnson because you heard from Cypress Trails and Royal Palm Beach Elementary, and we're very close, so we do a lot of the similar, a lot of similar things um, as far as curriculum, although I'm going to get a little bit into that. So I just want to talk about some things that are H.L. Johnson specific. So PBS, um, which is Positive Behavior Support, and this is PBIS on here, so it's Intervention Support. So we do class rewards if our students are walking, transitioning as a class, and they're doing all the right things, staying quiet, staying on their paw prints, uh, following all the rules at H.L. Johnson. 
then they get class rewards, so their tickets, and as many as possible go out. The classes with the most tickets each month are rewarded. And then we also have individual positive referrals that, again, can be given out at any time. And, um, and this is all for behaviors, so doing the positive right things on campus and following the rules. And if you get an individual positive referral at Royal Palm Beach Ice Cream, you take it there and you get a free ice cream. And they're one of our business partners. We also have Noble Jaguar, which are char different characteristics each month that are teacher nominated. And if you win a Noble Jaguar, you get to have lunch with Miss Aguidello and I. And, um, and that happens the last Thursday of every month. And then report cards, of course, for getting good grades. You do get a reward. We have an exemplary academic award and an academic achievement award, as well as FSA achievement. And then um, for fun, we have a ton of dress up days. So um, these are just a few. But, um, <laughs> but this is just some examples. Today is the 80th school day. And so we dressed up as 80s themed or 80s ugly sweater today. I didn't wear my ugly sweater here. I thought I'd dress up a little bit, um, you know, professionally. But, um, but today is the 80th day, and that was a lot of fun. And we have festive Fridays right now. So every Friday we're dressing up for festive, uh, to be festive. And then next Wednesday is pajama days, and I didn't even put that on there. But we have a ton of days that we dress up. And once a month when we have our green day, we all have green shirts that we wear to talk about you know, recycling and just making sure that we all know what our initiatives are at H.L. Johnson. And then other fun things, um, on Green Days, we also have our monthly scoop night where everyone can join Miss Agudelo and I at Royal Palm Beach Ice Cream on Thursday nights, the last Thursday of the month. I'm sorry, the first Thursday of the month. And then we had a VP, and these are all parent attended. So, you know, we've been going, we got away from that with the pandemic and now we're getting that back in. So this year, all of this has been either has already happened parent attended or we plan to have it parent attended. VBK Turkey Tribute was a show, uh, Kindergarten Thanksgiving Theater, the Character Parade, excuse me, for Halloween. We had STEAM Family Night, which Royal Palm Beach High School, all of their students in different clubs ran those tables. Um, that was amazing. We had our winter concert at Royal Palm Beach High School in the auditorium last week, two nights because we wanted to break it up and as many parents that could come, as well as you know, see your child, and we have 800 students. They only have 836 seats. The reason I know that is because I used to work there. But, um, <laughs> but, but we wanted to make sure as many parents as they could came, so we broke up the show into two different shows. And then we have SLAM Family Night, which is um, science, literacy, arts, mathematics, and media. Sorry, I almost forgot that second M, and media. And that will be in the last week of January. We also have our spelling bee, which will be attended by fourth and fifth grade parents. Um, we will have an FSA parade to cheer on our kids before FSA. And we have a fifth grade award ceremony and then VPK graduation. So those are things that are all the parents will be on our campus for now that we're starting to get a healthier community. Again, I want to remind you of our vision because we're getting ready to go into our data. And I just put a little bit of data, but I want you to know what's happening at HL Johnson. So um, this is our school improvement plan goals and focus, and this is aligned with also our central region and our district. But I do want you to know that HL Johnson, we um, need to really focus on our learning gains. Last year, learning gains were, were the lowest at HL Johnson that they had been in the last six years. And so that does have to do with COVID and being a pandemic. So that is also a huge focus for us. And the way you make learning gains is going from third grade to fourth grade and then fourth grade to fifth grade. And last year, it was our third grade that were in fifth grade that were tested again, and that's where the learning gains were judged from. So we're definitely putting a focus on that. But on our school improvement plan, we're just talking about ELA and math, and this just is achievement overall. So um, our intended outcome for the end of this school year is for 73% of our students at Hazel Johnson will demonstrate proficiency in ELA and the same thing in mathematics. The ELA overall, we only dropped 3%, which we're, we are, you know, lucky for that. But in math, we dropped 11%. So this is going to be 11%, you know, build to get to that 73% this year. And the whole year. world dropped, so don't feel bad. Yes, so yes. That's the one subject. Yes. And, but the wonderful thing that we did at H.L. Johnson when we are just looking at third grade is we were recognized as one of the schools that improved by 3% or more, and we actually improved by 7% in our eight, in our third grade ELA. So, so that is very, I mean, considering that 
I'll take that as a win. So, and this is the part that's different. Um, so at HL Johnson, we have incredible teachers. And it is just, but it's also a hard time. At the beginning of this year, you know, it was, it was a struggle. And it's a heavy lift right now. And the teachers, everyone is feeling it. And the teachers are feeling it. So really what we're doing at HL Johnson is we're being the light. And the light represents a few things, right? The students, they light up our world. Also, when you think of a light, you think of a light bulb goes off. You think of an idea, innovation. Also think of learning. And, um, and being the light in a room is, it means a lot to us at H.L. Johnson. So, but it's also not just that, it's also action at H.L. Johnson. So I'm gonna explain what being the light is at H.L. Johnson for our teachers. So it's lesson planning, it's intentional instructional strategies, it's goal setting, it's high quality monitoring, and it's teaching. And I'm gonna go more into that, but that is what being the light is to us at H.L. And so lesson planning. Uh, at HL Johnson, we had great leadership throughout the years, and they had a lot of structures in place and systems in place. So I get to come in and kind of add to them, which is very exciting for me. And so they already had PLCs and common plannings, but it was only 45 minutes a week. And so we've extended that to 90 minutes a week. So we have CPM means common planning meetings, and PLC means professional learning communities. Um, and so I want to tell you the difference. So 45 minutes a week. We have common planning meetings, which are planning focused. It's unit planning, unpacking standards. It's talking about the gradual release model. I do, we do, you do. It's assessment development. It's monitoring development. It's assignment development. Um, it's also talking about instructional strategies. How will we teach that? Will it be collaborative? Will it be individual? It's really planning out those question stems when we're planning a lesson. And then it's all about the materials and the technology. What materials are we going to use? What technology are we going to use? And okay. then the PLC. I'm going to stop you here. I'm going to stop you here for a minute. Yes. <clears throat> There's a new principal. New teachers get killed. These type of things take away from time for them to catch up, to do some of these things to be better at. It is communication, but you, what I'm seeing across the country, I'm on two national groups that talk about this. They're not lasting because we're killing them with all of these pieces where they have to and it's, it's like a kid that goes to college that doesn't take anything in their major and takes all the prereqs and doesn't get to really get excited about what they're doing. We're, we're putting teachers in all new teachers. I'm just talking about new teachers. In a lot of situations where they are so inundated with so much data reporting and all of these planning things that they never get a chance to kind of grasp what their own vision is. Well, I'm going to disagree a little bit. Um, with being a new teacher and having these collaborative planning meetings actually is a supportive group. And it's taking on the expertise and an expert coming in and saying, this is what's worked. This is what we're doing as a team. These are, it's actually taking away from you, like a weight off your plate. It's taking things off your plate and doing it together. And yeah, it's I a would lot disagree with you there. I would tell you I disagree with you because I talk to people, when I talk to them, they tell me it's really not, because what's happening is I have beginning students, they have elite students, and they're two different curriculums. Then I have to go do the curriculum again. And then I have to, I don't get to take the next one next year, I take another one. So what I'm sharing is not the overall picture and the purpose of it. I'm sharing the humanity of what I'm hearing from new teachers that the numbers that are coming out that they're not lasting and the, the time frames that they're, what they were losing them so fast, it, it's just something to be aware of. Yeah, no, but definitely. That, Teaching is a hard career, for sure. But these things are where they've just said, wow. You know, I mean, you in these meetings, I mean, I see the focus, but now it's 90 minutes. Now it's another one. We have another one with another meeting. Then there's another meeting. In classroom management, instructional pieces and the basics of what we did as educations sometimes moves away from them and it gets overwhelming. I'm just sharing that feedback from the national standards and some of the people I've talked to in the community who are not teaching anymore because of those particular things. If, yes, I, you know, it all comes down to leadership and good support and making sure that we are doing our best. So if this is an expectation, what am I t relaxing from? And if this is an expectation of good collaborative planning and good collaborative data and good, I mean, truly being a teacher, you're going to be more successful the better your plans are and the more prepared you are and the more ready you are. And, um, and if, if you're allowed to, as you get a new employee who's 
get an orientation with 452 slides. Uh, it, it, you, there, there's an incremental piece that moves through that. There's also a relationship piece, and that's a huge piece of it. And so building those relationships within those working groups is what's going to get you to that next level. And yes. If they're, if they're happy and positive. You had 10 years. So I'm going to walk out of a four-year educational instructional piece you know, right into a classroom. I, it, that's, that's, that's the only thing I'm sure. Yeah, I don't no, want to, and I don't most, want to sidetrack you, but yeah. I'm just feeling a lot of this and hearing a lot of this nationwide. No, and I definitely agree. You know, the great thing about H.L. Johnson, we only have one new teacher <laughs> because people stay for so long. Um, and so I only have one new teacher currently. And, um, and so it's like we get to put – everything into her because we have that one new teacher now there's not there's schools across the board that have much more than one teacher but we really get to like help and support and grow and I'm new too right and so and one of my major things is relationships and um, one of the things on our PLCs you know what can I do more for you what do you need more of and is everyone honest every day no but but I really feel I'm the right person for the job and um, and I know where they're coming from and I'm homegrown and so we're allowed to be able to say the things that we need it's not always perfect but we are you know but it is grow, a support system as you hire more and they're not all been there for 11 years right these are things you need to be aware of that, that are out there yeah as, no, as a group Thank as you. a group of us not just this yeah group. you know it, it's a group but this that's a piece I just want to share because I know what you do over there yeah but not everybody gets that I agree I'm sorry to side. I mean sidetrack. That's just a, a point. All good. I'm getting ready to talk a little bit more about these meetings. Just so, <laughs> <laughs> so get ready. Um, so then the next part, the other 45 minutes, and they're split into two days. So yes, I'm taking two 45 minutes, but it's part of their day. They we do plan for this in their day of work. This is not after their hours. This is actually within their hours. So just to add that too. Um, so it's data focused. Um, this the PLC part. And so this is where, really where we review the data. Um, we look at student work. So we plan their student work, but did it actually turn out the way it was supposed to? So this is where we really look at that. Uh, we talk about intervention and enrichment. Those students that aren't getting it, how are we going to put those intervention supports in? And those ones that are getting it, how are we going to extend their learning? Monitoring is a huge piece of teaching. Every, te every teacher does this. They're always monitoring. Everything that they do, they're saying, oh, this lesson is working. Or, um, you know, maybe I need to do a little bit more or the directions I gave, they didn't understand. We're always monitoring. So this is just talking about that. Is our monitoring working and are we catching them early enough? And then goal setting. So which is a large part of teaching as well. And again, my teachers already really all do this, um, but the planning piece is huge, especially if we want to maximize every moment because we are in a pandemic and we need to get these students ready for their future. So intentional instructional strategies, these are just some examples of them. But again, the whole, pop, the whole idea is the gradual release model. And again, these are strategies. But these are things that we're doing within the classroom after we had our common planning, then we had our PLC. Is this working? If it's not working, let's be intentional about it. And so again, now we come back to our common planning meeting. Did this work? Did it not work? My students aren't getting it based on these assessments. What are we changing so we can ensure that we are maximizing the moment? Goal setting, SMART goals. Um, this is not only for teachers, but this is also for our students. But again, that comes back to looking at that data. Where do we want our students to be? Where do we need to get them? And so that's a large part of what we do at H.L. Johnson. High quality monitoring. I talked a little bit about that, but that's really in the moment and this is the hard piece we're, we're monitoring all the time and we're checking their whiteboards and did they get the correct answer and we're walking around and we're circulating but if they're not getting the right answer what are we doing and how are we shifting or pivoting in order to make sure that they're understanding the content that i am giving them and then teaching which is what our teachers do best and this is the continuous improvement model, but that's all about teaching every moment of the day. Plan, do, check, act. Plan, do, check, act. And that's what we're doing at HL. So again, being the light, 
Uh, you know, we need each other in order for this to work, and we also need to have good teaching, and it's an action at H.L. Johnson, but everyone in the school has a piece in this. Uh, you know, our students are, the reason we're doing this is for our students to learn. And so also other pieces of our school, so Miss Aggie Dello, um, also an, a Jaguar when she went to elementary school, so you have an assistant principal, principal team at um, H.L. Johnson running it, growing up in this community. And, um, and being a part of it. So that's the first picture. That is us at Royal Palmach High School for our winter performance. Um, we plan on being in there a long time together, and we're in it. I hashtag us as the dynamic duo, and, <laughs> and we're going to live up to that. So, um, But without her, the school, really, she has been there seven years now at the school and, um, and in many different positions, but became assistant principal with Ms. Mikowski and before that, she was the ESC coordinator, and you saw we have a large ES, uh, students with disabilities population, so she knows um, these students, and she knows the families, and is just a, a key part of H.L. Johnson. And then our PTO, uh, we really count on our PTO. They do so much for us. Uh, w you know, without them, we wouldn't have a lot of the opportunities that we do have. You know, Danielle and I are in the school, and they're out there getting those business partnerships that we need in order to make our STEAM happen or Cambridge and making sure that we just have state-of-the-art equipment for our students to learn from. The hydroponics bins, they're building those. You know, uh, it's just really without these people right here uh, it, and our teachers, H.L. Johnson just wouldn't be H.L. Johnson. And then I need to thank my central region. I'm sorry, Valerie, I'm going to say this, but she was also a Jaguar once. And <laughs> but um, we have a great support system. I mean, they're all here, and um, we're really, really, really lucky. I can call them at any time, and they answer my questions. Vivian, poor Vivian, she's not here today. Um, but she, you know, I text her in the middle of the night, and she'll answer me if something's on my mind. And uh, just it's a great support, and we're really lucky. Again, coming from the high school, Karen Wetzel also just being at the high school supported us so much and was there all the time. And so we really, really are tight knit. So this is the best picture I had. Sorry, guys. Um, <laughs> we need to work on that. But um, but really, it is it's a community. And as you know, we have a continuum. So <laughs> so Tracy is here, um, and Bruce and. Being new to elementary, we really bounce off things. They have the experience, and so, again, I text them sometimes and just, like, just a random question, not even a hello. It's just like, what are you guys doing with this, you know, and um, just to get their input. But we want to make sure that we are also united front, and we're doing the best we can for the students in our community, and we want to work together. So this continuum and the Education Advisory Board, I thank you for always working with us and the honesty and the, you know, just having our backs. We all were together last Tuesday. Councilman Hamera and Dr. Thalamer came to visit me at HL. And then I do want to do something fun if you guys are into it. So I'm all about being the light. I don't know if you want to. You feel like it, but we have to stand up and we have to hold hands. You feel like doing that? Okay. doing that for me and please always stay connected um, at HL Johnson. Thank you for having me. Thank you for letting me do this. <laughs> Thank you for doing it. Great. Councilman and Mary, you have anything you want to add? Yeah. Hello. You're not done yet. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> Where's she going? All right. 
This is the fun part for us. Right. <laughs> no, I don't have anything in particular. I, I do want to follow up, though, with you at some point on that uh, on that meeting. Oh, perfect. Yeah, sure. Anything to add to our amazing principal? Good job. Thanks. <laughs> She's so stealing that energy light thing. I just want you to know. So stealing. You can borrow it, Alex. <laughs> Crystal, how about you? Gotta yes. Got to get one of those. Crystal, anything you want to add? You've been a you've been one. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'm very much being blessed. Oh, for sure. Denise, anything you want to add? She, I do. I want to say congratulations on your common planning and your professional learning communities. I completely disagree with you because <laughs> I have been. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> I have been in an environment where I've seen new <laughs> teachers leave because they don't have that support system. So I think it's extremely invaluable. So congratulations. Ms. Ryan? Um, just very impressed with your presentation. Thank you so much. You put your heart into what you do. And it shows in Dr. Amos to be a profoundly proud of you. I'm sure he is. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, and succession planning is about bringing strong leaders in that grow strong leaders. And You've been part of that, and you're already passing that down. And the only way our system's ever going to be strong is to keep growing good leaders like yourself and helping you grow those that come after you. And uh, I think that's probably one of your greatest passions is you're going to grow like somebody grew you. And uh, the families and parents, are they're so lucky to have you. But I tell you what, we're lucky to have you because the passion, the energy, all that, the vision, it's all what a good leader does. And you have all of that. And so we're very excited to have you. Welcome to the family here. And uh, yes, go ahead. Yeah, so I, I did want to just jump in there. Now, I'm certainly not a professional educator. I'm, the nearest thing to that was filling one of my bucket list items, which was to be, which I did at Palm Beach Atlantic University for five years as an adjunct. And and I will tell you, one of the most disappointing, I probably don't want to say this, come to think of it now, but I love PBAU, absolutely great school for so many reasons, but what I missed was the support. As, as a new instructor, as a new teacher, I, I had a scramble to find people to support, to, to explain, to help me, to facilitate, to, to mentor, and, and to have that as a structural thing, which, by the way, I suggested to the dean, but unfortunately, we never really got it up and running. I believe it's a powerful thing. At the same time, allowing enough flexibility so I get to tailor reaching out and, and having that engagement and that help in accordance with what I believe that I need. That's a great combination. It really is, and that requires feedback and listening, and I know you're going to do that, and you are a wonderful leader. So thank you. Yes. Okay, welcome to the family. Yay, Have a nice you. holiday, okay? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Great was program. Great. It was fabulous. Right. Fabulous. <laughs> wonderful, wonderful. And it wasn't near as long as Armistice, so you're pretty good. <laughs> oh, there's no doubt. He tell you he's not loud. He's long. We know that. We love him to death, though. He's amazing. So from our central region, Ms. Valerie, would you like to share all your updates? Valerie. Good evening. Is that like your backyard? What a beautiful picture. That's nice. Oh, I see. On the desktop. Okay. Found. It is now found. Thank you. Well, good evening, everyone. I uh, appreciate being here uh, this evening. It's December, which means that it marks the end of 2021. Um, super happy about that. I'm looking forward to a great 2022 like the rest of us. Uh, but I am here this evening, and I would like to, of course, uh, as always, um, thank my team for being here with me this evening. I have Ms. Karen Wetzel who's here with us, secondary schools instructional superintendent. 
Eric Stern. He is known as the graduation guy. Uh, but he is here in a dual role. He, he, we have been short-staffed at Central Region Office, and so Mr. Stern has been very helpful and instrumental uh, with, um, you know, helping us out in the Central Region, so we, we appreciate him here, him being here with us this evening and always supporting our work as well. Uh, we also have uh, several of our principals and also assistant principals that are here with us this evening. And then I have a very important introduction, a formal introduction in a little bit, for our uh, principal of Royal Palm Beach High School. So let's go ahead and get started. You know, we can't start. I hope that when we get to 2022, I'm just going to skip through that slide, okay? <laughs> but we got to finish out 2021 with our COVID slide. Uh, the update as of uh, December 13th, which is today, total number of cases, 6,942, of which employees, 966, students, 5,976. We have seen, though, um, just like we have in Palm Beach County, um, where it has really slowed down quite a bit. I mean, before it used to be where we, we are notified of every case that comes through at our school centers, and we would be receiving 10, 12 a day. Now we're maybe receiving one every other day, so it's not nearly as frequent as it was before. So I'm here to highlight uh, our schools in, in uh, Royal Palm Beach, but before I do that, I do want to thank Ms. Amado Kucharski for doing such a great job tonight with H.L. Johnson and the talent that you have in your students are our, our, our chorus. I mean, that talent, I'd like, they motivated me tonight. So um, I'm actually going to probably ask you to videotape that for me because I would love to be able to use a couple of those song selections to really um, motivate our adults too, you know, so I would really appreciate that. I mean, that was, it's absolute, absolute talent, so thank you for that. Um, I also want to um, support you in your uh, discourse in regards to the uh, professional learning communities and uh, common planning. I'm going to tell you, coming from a school, from a portfolio of schools that we have some of the heaviest lift um, with uh, schools that are really in the low 300, the schools that I support and that I supervise has many new uh, teachers. Some of our schools, 15 or more brand new teachers. And I promise you the support systems that need to be provided to them is above and beyond um, what, we'd, what we would expect. It is so difficult for teachers to work in silos because they don't know what they don't know. They don't know what questions to ask. But when they have a support system that have done the work for years and have learned, sometimes hard lessons learned, they're able to really just um, not having to have those lessons learn and slow everything else down. That support system is super important. So having that as part of a system in, um, within the school is so important. So I know I've heard really good things, too, about your PLCs because, you know, Ms. Green and myself, we have our own PLCs. Mind you, we have our own PLCs in Central Region once a week. We meet and we talk discussion or we, we discuss um, instruction, teaching and learning, best practices, and we even have PLCs across schools, which is very unique. We share some of the best practices, some of the great work that we're seeing from one school and to see how we can replicate it in another school. So um, that cross uh, collaboration is super important. So, But I, I, I can understand the stress of a first year teacher. It's a lot. It, it really, it truly is a lot. And so it's I'm not, not it's downplaying that at all. It's not the, it's not the support all. group, Valerie. It's, it's literally the timing Time. of how long. It's not that. I, I'm 100% behind the support group. I completely agree. But when you look at the time and you map out a time of a new teacher where they have any time themselves to just ingest and, you know, not necessarily have to have, have to support, it just it gets shorter and shorter and shorter with all the things mm -hmm. you do. That's all. That, but I will tell you this, when you have a group of professionals that are working together for 45 minutes, they can plan out two, three, four lessons than being by yourself not knowing how to plan a lesson that could take three, four hours. So in some ways, it does save time. In other ways, I do believe that once you leave a PLC or a common planning time, you need to digest the lesson yourself to be able to understand how it will work or how you have to tailor that lesson to your group of students. So I can understand that also. Yeah, it's but just a, a time. A thing. new a new a first year teacher is one of the hardest experiences that I think any one of us, including myself, that um, has taught 
Same thing with a new year, a new first year of principal. It is one of the most difficult jobs, um, you know, as a first year principal. So, anyhow, just I don't. I'm, we're gonna we're we're gonna go ahead and just continue on. Listen, I get so, you just had to bash me. It's so like you joined Denise. Sorry, this is okay. sorry, hey, I'm Dr. really Dr. good with all this. I'm, I'm not, you know, you. my graduation <laughs> guys over there. Jeff got real silent all of a sudden, right? I'm, well, don't, don't don't get me started again. I, well. I'll tell you about the response I got when I asked for extra help. I was told that's called academic freedom. <laughs> I'm sorry. And I will say, you know, but I'm gonna I'm gonna add one more piece though, because you know we too are, are lifelong learners, right? As and as leaders in the central region, we too are learning together. So we actually had a book study at the beginning of this year, of which is called Hundred Day Leader. It's excellent. Read it. And one of those one of those one of those chapters and one of those. Um, the focus point was really around the importance of PLCs. So as a region, that became our focus for the beginning of the year. So when I tell you that it excites me tremendously to just know that some of those systems are absolutely ingrained in many of our schools in the central region, pretty much all of them. But you know, as we know, some PLCs that have been very healthy and have been very um, effective and functional for years are some of the best learning communities that you'll see and you'll experience. And then some are new at it you know they're in and as soon as you have a brand new grade level team it really it really you almost get to back to the starting point like you have to start all over again and creating and developing that team and that group so but anyway so let's talk about your elementary schools or our elementary schools over at in the village of royal palm we're going to start with cypress trails home of the lions okay and i guess i'm just wanted to make sure that i i you know a flash up. <laughs> so over at Cyber Trails, they collected almost, um, well, about 10,442 candy wrappers for the Unwrap the Waves collection sponsored by Loggerhead Marine Life Center. This is a wonderful opportunity for our students to learn about conservation and how they can have a positive impact on the environment. H.L. Johnson, we've heard many, many great things about H.L. Johnson tonight. Um, and I I'm certainly hope that I say it correctly. H.L. Johnson celebrated the, Native, the National Native American Heritage Month in November, and on Friday, November 19th, the Seminole Tribe of Florida presented the Atafiki Museum, partnered with H.L. Johnson uh, for a school-wide Native Day. H.L. Johnson also had the privilege of our board member, Ms. Andrews, to help learn celebrate and honor the Seminole tribe and all natives um, on that day. In the pictures are Cypress, the lead educator from the Atafiki Museum, a rotation of the H.L. Johnson students who all made replica turtle shell rattles to honor the Seminole people and their culture. The Jaguars learned songs, traditional celebrations, taking care of the earth, and learned more about the culture of Seminole tribe through a Q&A session. What a great learning experience. Also, well, we saw, you heard the talent tonight. On December 7th and 8th, um, they had their winter concert at the Royal Palm Beach High School's auditorium. And it's so nice to see that our kids are starting to come back and just be able to do those fun, great things that really just complete the child as a learner. So we're so thrilled to provide that opportunity to our students again and our parents to be able to enjoy that as well. Royal Palm Beach Elementary School, Principal Getty. So a Royal Palm Beach Elementary School, they have implemented two new positive initiatives this month. And I know this is one of Mrs. Wessel's favorite because it's called a WooHoo <laughs> Academic Awards <laughs> and Bobcat Bus Behavior Recognition. So the WooHoo referrals are submitted by teachers to recognize students, putting forth great effort in making academic progress. Students are celebrated and presented with special certificates with specific academic reason that they are being recognized. And then the positive Bobcat bus tickets are awarded to students who follow our Bobcat guidelines while on the school bus. Because we know our bus drivers need help with that, just to make sure that the students are doing the right thing. Students turn their bus tickets in for special prices, and buses are um, competing with each other to see who can earn the most tickets. Well, I wouldn't mind riding on that school bus. That's awesome. Also, Bobcats are lighting our school up with kindness throughout the month of December. Staff were all surprised with handwritten notes of appreciation when they returned from Thanksgiving break. 
and all staff and students are encouraged to share notes of appreciation with each other throughout the month on the holiday light paper. Very nice. Crestwood Middle School with Dr. Nance, as you know, Dr. Nance and Crestwood Middle School was featured in the Royal Palm Magazine. Uh, so we are continue to be soaring over at Crestwood. It's also nice to see the science fair projects are back and back up and and uh, over at the science fair, which is so nice to see our students and participate. And also the Crestwood Middle School Handbells Ensemble. Uh, you can also find the ensemble. You can find the concert in YouTube if you look it up. You can see it there. You can watch it. So it's so nice to see our students back again performing. And tonight the big event is over at Royal Palm Beach High School. We have our principal Michelle Fleming who is with us this evening. So we certainly want to welcome Michelle Fleming to Royal Palm Beach High School and to you tonight. I'm going to have her uh, come up and I'm going to invite her to come up in just a minute to be able to um, introduce herself to you. But before that, you know, we've got to show off of some of the things going on at Royal Palm Beach High School. So we have the, our, uh, the NJROTC inspection happening there at, uh, in Wildcat Country as well as uh, 18 dedicated Wildcat educators with perfect attendance all year. And then Latinos in Action serving the Thanksgiving lunch to teachers. Also, it's nice to see that our students are back again with their live performances. So this is their first live performance in over two years. So before I wish you all a happy holiday, I would like to invite Mrs. Fleming to come on up. Do you like to say a few words? And then I'll come back up for questions. I can tell you I definitely won't be as long-winded as Armas, so you guys have that to look forward to. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Sorry, Dr. Armas, if you're watching. Um, so thank you very much. It's a privilege to be here this evening at the first uh, Educational Advisory Board. Um, I'm looking forward to getting to know all of you here on this board. I already had the pleasure of speaking with uh, Jeff Amara, came for a visit for the school, and I hope you all will do the same so that I can get to know you better in the village. Um, since 2007, I've wanted to be a high school principal when I stepped foot in as an English teacher, and so my dream has finally come true, and I have spent nine amazing years at Palm Beach Gardens High School, and it fully prepared me to tackle this role at Royal Palm Beach High School. Uh, it is no small feat, but I am so energized and ready to bring a fresh body, a fresh idea to um, Royal Palm Beach High School, and um, I hit the ground running. I started two days before the Thanksgiving break, and um, just big things to come. We're really excited. Tomorrow is our Academy Open House. Really looking forward to meeting all of the families, the incoming, soon to be incoming ninth graders, and they're just amazing academics. The academics are, have already impressed me tremendously, and I'm just looking forward to continuing to grow that. So thank you for the opportunity to say hello to you all this evening, and happy holidays. Where's she, where's she going? What is it with these people? You're, they just leave. <laughs> just what's your vision you know this is all you now so this is it's a good system a good thing and it's I, I i would just be interested to hear your vision real quick i'm sorry i just really excited you're here oh thanks i am really excited to be here so m my vision is to continue to get as many students as possible to walk across the stage at graduation and to also prepare them for life outside of high school right because the work we do in high school is the most critical work. They're going to that next level. So wh whatever we do as a system and as a family at Royal Palm Beach High School to prepare students for life post-graduation, I think is just going to help children and the students do better in life in general. So that can mean a, a multitude of things, right? So we're going to continue to increase the enrollment in our advanced coursework. Dr. Armas laid a good foundation. We have about 65% of our students right now in a college-level course. So the next step to that is maintaining and increasing that percentage and helping those students who are struggling because it's their first time in a class like that and helping them stay and helping them see that this is going to help them be successful. Not only are they getting the college credit, but it could lead them to a pathway that they may not have got onto before. So I plan on continuing to lead that work and just continuing to watch it grow. We have I mean, the HVAC program, getting our kids into a trade that they can go out in Florida. How many, I wonder how many air conditionings break a day, right? And like growing that program and continuing to grow the IB program, the IB program and the ACE program. I'm very proud of the ACE work. I started the ACE program at Gardens myself from the ground up. 
And so the value in that and then with Crystal and creating that pathway and hopefully, you know, working with Crestwood and all of the feeders and making sure that Cambridge makes its way because at the end of the day, those students receive 100% right future, just like IB. So it's critical to increase the opportunities for those classes. So I want to see a lot more college credit coming out. Sorry. Just from an experience here, and you worked hard on it. It's very difficult to do. Is the parent involvement is, is not as high as it could be. And so working on that together as community-based is really important because I think once parents understand the value and can support their children when they get there, they tend to all do better things as they go, and then the siblings come in, and it just becomes a happy community. That's, that's you know, from our perspective as a board and what we do with you. You know, and um, I heard fabulous things about you, and your interview was dynamic, which was really, they were all excited. Which is, you know, as, as we are, right? Anybody, uh, Crystal, anybody want to? She's already said she's. I said, have you got her trained yet? And Alice goes, give me a couple months. <laughs> so she's, she's good like that to work with you. It's a good group, you know. And uh, Crystal, you have anything you want to share with her to welcome her in? Or? I just want to welcome her because I feel so welcome here. Yeah. I'm happy to be here. Yeah. I have those moments every time. Take it by Brittany? Brittany? Ms. Welcome, and I can see that you're charged up, ready to do it. So welcome, and looking forward to all the great things to come. Denise, you share? Tell me what. And anything we can do to be of any service to you, and what your success is and what the student success are. Uh, I've been there a couple times in the Watchdog program. Omar's a good friend of mine, and he's very excited you're there. And anything we can do as a board to make sure you're successful is what we are here for. It's the best team you're going to have here. I know and, that. And, uh, you know, obviously they all went against me, which means I know how they are because they're good like that. <laughs> they're very intelligent. They're very smart. And uh, our point is to, is to help you and support you. Thank you. So welcome to the family as well. Just lucky too. Valerie got you first. Well, you we know. That's why she <laughs> I knew what you guys were doing. So, I saw it all. I saw the faces. So, we got to stick together. I'm sorry. I know that. Sorry. Actually, actually, there are two things I want to mention. One was uh, one of the things, and, and by the way, when we stop talking about Dr. Armas, you'll know that you have now. Yeah. Yes. Right. Understood. And but it is our reference point for a lot of reasons, and and some of his legacy carries on here, but. Um, he laid a good foundation on a number of areas, and some things are not really fully understood. You mentioned HVAC. I, I love the way you brought that up because one of the things when I attended an ac academy night over there that I was most impressed with was out of all of the academies, I mean, who would have thought? I mean, I come from a, a plumber, steam fitter, family background, right? So I get the trades. I really do. But I wouldn't have thought to have been so impressed with one academy in particular, and that being the HVAC, over all of the other academies. Isn't that amazing? That's a well, wonderful, as wonderful you know, legacy. A, a quality teacher can work wonders. And Absolutely. you have a quality teacher in HVAC that's truly preparing your students. So, I mean, you can't beat it. We forget about trades a lot. We don't have trade schools, but all the schools that have, like, that little caveat like we do can really propel students. They can be their own, their business owners. So not only are they teaching them the HVAC skills, but how to kind of run their show when they and get the out of school. the fact that you picked up on that already really is, is comforting to me, I, I'll tell you honestly. And then the other thing is that, once again, back to Dr. Armas, to say that whenever we would talk about the schools uh, in the county, uh, the high school, uh, he would refer to Palm Beach Gardens oftentimes as being very similar. And for you to have had nine years of experience there, says to me, I don't know if there could be better preparation actually so um, I'm I'm very excited about you being here I think it's gonna be great and uh, look forward to being able to support you however we can from the council point of view and also from the school appreciate board. that appreciate the open dialogue and communication moving forward so thank you thank you thank you, thank you. that's also a reflection and we did pretty good <laughs> you did I would agree 100% <laughs> as, a, nice, as an nice interviewing job. panel so yes so right. welcome
Uh, and so anyway, on behalf of the Central Region Office and schools, we, of course, want to wish you all a happy holiday. So if you have any questions for me. No? Great. Pretty good. No. <laughs> wow. She knows I was going to ask her. She knows I had one for her. Have a great holiday. Thank you for all you've done. And you've, how long have you been here now? Two years? Three? Three. This is Three? my third, third year. year. Yeah, it just seems like yesterday you came on board. It's happy to have you. Happy to have you. But I have yet to have a regular year, just so you know. Oh, I know. Their very I'm, first year, yeah. we opened up with hurricanes and finished with pandemic. Yeah. Last year was all a pandemic, and this year is a crossover. I don't know yeah. what it is. It's one of the, yeah. it's a catch-up. So Mike, he needs a vacation for you. Like, you know, it's <laughs> a special place for administrators fighting since he's three years of things. But I just want to tell from our world, you're a heck of a leader, and you hire great people, and you let them do their job. And uh, you salute them every single time, and that's leadership. And well, I'm you, blessed with the team that I have. you got a great team. Great team. Yes. It's amazing. I they didn't all have to be team. against me, but I get they're a good team, so I know. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Thank you. Thank have you, Val. Thank Appreciate you. it. Happy all right, Ed, we got a new friend. Right, you going to come join us today? i got to hear you today. I yeah, you're not I new see. anymore. See, we got these real new ones now. Now you're like... <laughs> I'm the newest one. How are you? Good to hear you. How's, tell us some good things about the school. Hi, yes, so I'm representing Western Academy Charter School. And uh, to highlight uh, some things we're doing in December, we're doing Toys for Tots this month. Um, we have raised over $1,000 so far. Uh, we have Penny Wars in our class, so the, the uh, different homerooms compete with each other by bringing in change. And um, we we have to cash out the change, but we have to go to different publixes and banks so they don't hate us. <laughs> so, <laughs> so every day we go to, you know, we target different places to go to cash out our, our change. And we've gone through half of our change so far, and it's over $1,000. So that's, oh, right. that's exciting. So that's all for Toys for Tots. And then we're doing Shop with a Cop um, Wednesday afternoon. Um, and... Yep, we're doing a multicultural day in December, and we also attended the Winterfest, the Royal Palm Beach Commons Winterfest, which was an amazing community event. We had a booth there, and we encouraged our students to attend, and if they visited our booth, they got a free dress-down day on Monday. So that was a great community event. We saw lots of our families in the community, and we met lots of families, too. So that was fun. And then if, I don't know if you've seen in the town crier, but we have exciting news. We are in the process of purchasing our own building. Right now we're renting out of um, a shopping center. We've been there for 20, 20, 19 years, 19 years. So this is really exciting for us because we'll finally have our own space um, and uh, it'll, it'll be more self-contained. We won't be um, in two separate buildings using a public park. So we're really excited. That's, um, it's only a mile away too. So if we're still serving Royal Palm Beach and you know, our students will be able to make the transition easily. And it's, well, it's a great way for you to put a stamp on your vision and what you're doing. And that'll be fun. So if anything we can do to help you with that and all that, and make great, sure people you. know what you're doing. And uh, enrollment's good? Yes. Yeah? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yep, we're steady. We've been steady, so. Mm -hmm. yep. Well, that's good to know. Good. You're okay? Having yes. fun still? <laughs> I'm looking forward to winter break, but I'm good. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Any questions? Anybody? No? No? Great. Well, thank you. Thank you. Happy holidays. Happy thank holidays to you. you as well. Woo-hoo, are you going to say anything, or are you, you, you're done? Of course you will. <laughs> the woo-hoo ticket. I, that just is so you. That is, <laughs> I yeah, like that idea. Of course. <laughs> okay. So uh, first, Crystal, you did an amazing job tonight. Um, working with Crystal brings a whole new energy to all of our schools. It's like having a new teacher on your campus, having a new principal on your team, just really brings back a lot of excitement and energy. And I appreciate that Crystal, Crystal is a person that will text you at four o'clock in the morning, and I can respond to her at four o'clock in the morning, <laughs> and it's all okay. And we bounce ideas back and forth a lot, along with Bruce, which is just phenomenal to have that team of all three of us working together. We all bring out the best in each other, and. I think we're all better when we're working together. So I appreciate that. And Crystal, you did a phenomenal job tonight. Um, a couple quick updates about Royal Palm Beach Elementary. We held our own Bobcat Winterfest on Friday night just a couple days ago. It was a blast. So we had the blow-up movie screen out on the basketball court, and families brought their own lawn chairs and set up, and 
watched lots of different holiday movies. Under the pavilion, we had about 10 different arts and crafts set up, which Royal Palm Beach High School volunteers helped facilitate the arts and crafts activities. And then we had like Kona ice and pizza, popcorn, soda. It was so much fun to be outside and in person with all of our, it would have been nice if it could have been, you know, just a little cooler outside, but it was a phenomenal night. And I think that when I asked Royal Palm Beach High School for volunteers, it might have been your first day on the job. <laughs> and you all came through with lots of volunteers at our school, so I really appreciate that support. Could have been, could have been, yeah. <laughs> so I know it was a crazy time. I appreciate the, the response for, with the volunteers. And now coming up, we are having some winter academic challenges for our students over the holiday break. Not to stress people out, but just to have some challenges going on. In kindergarten through third grade, we're having a reading challenge to see if students can read in different locations or with mittens on, with a flashlight, in a tent, that kind of thing, with a hot chocolate. Hopefully it'll get cooler. Um, and they'll be sending our pictures, so follow us on Facebook because you will see lots of reading pictures from our K-3 Bobcats coming up. In fourth and fifth grade, our students are doing a writing project over the break. It will not take long. It is not very difficult. But they will win pizza with the principal if they complete their writing project over the winter break. And then for our entire school, we are doing an iReady challenge for math and reading. If we pass, we're doing different challenges with our classes. So you can join the 50s club or the 100s club by passing 50 lessons in iReady, reading and math combined, over the winter break, or 100, whatever. Um, our goal right now is to beat Mrs. Castillo's class because Mrs. Castillo's class solved, or, um, pardon me, passed 108 lessons over Thanksgiving break. So our goal is to beat Mrs. Castillo's 108 lessons passed. As a school, if we pass 2,000 lessons over the winter break, which would be about 50 lessons per classroom, then every student in the school will get to toss a ball and try to dunk me and my assistant principal, Mrs. Fong, in the dunk tanks. So it should be a lot of fun. I'll update you at the next meeting how many lessons we passed. We're hoping for over 2,000, and then we're hoping for a hot day in January to do the dunk tank. <laughs> but Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, Happy New Year to all of you. It's great to see you, as always. Great. Thank you. Thanks, Tracy. I sure appreciate it. Anybody else have anything you want to share? Come up and share? Uh, just a, a note coming backwards. A couple of the middle schools, some of the, the sixth graders were, because they've been boxed up so long, they just were having some kind of behavioral boy stuff, you know, and, and, and they just talked about how strong our kids are coming out of the, the elementary schools. Like how they get through and how they help each other and how they have this camaraderie and this community that they come to. So you guys should be really commended for what you do, getting them prepared. It's, uh, it's amazing to see. Um, a couple of things on our end. Um, that you'll certainly want to know, Shell, is, is the, uh, we have a scholarship. One of the things we do is we give out the, our group is uh, have scholarships. There's 10 scholarships. We give out a $1,000 scholarship. And that's going to be in the town crier on uh, this Friday. It'll come out first. Um, and then it comes in again on January 14th and uh, January 28th. And then they have to be postmarked by the February uh, 11th. And then we'll meet on the 14th, the meeting, we follow the meeting to pare down what those are. And then the finalists will interview on a Saturday, which was great to get them back in front of us again because they, they're just an amazing group of young people. Um, if you ever don't believe the world's in a good place, you haven't spent time with young people because they get it. And, uh, and then the, on the May 19th, at the uh, regular meeting, we'll announce the winners. You know, and that's, it's, it's always a great thing. And, and they'll be advertised on the Villages Comcast channel. So we'll make sure we get that out to you. And you know, Michelle, if you get a chance to, uh, the browser they have, make sure they use the right browser. Like Chrome is a better browser for them to download. Yeah, because sometimes they, it doesn't download on, on all the other ones, but Chrome is, is great. Yeah, yeah. So that's, uh, and two weeks before the due date, they're going to advertise on the electric sign board just to make sure our kids are, it's a great thing the village has helped us with. We want to make sure we get to the right kids. Right? That, that's, that's a really good thing. Um, now we have our favorite reporter. Come oh, the favorite. Uh, absolutely. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Okay, uh, Student Council has been very busy for the month of December. 
In the beginning of the month, we participated with DECA for our stockings for soldiers. We filled the stockings with candy, hygiene products, socks, and other things, other fun things. We are also participating in Adopt a Family, where we will all walk to Target together, Student Council, and buy presents for families in need. All of Student Council puts money into the, pro into the project to make this happen. Just, uh, last but not least, this week we are celebrating Wildcat Winter Week. Uh, where each day we wear a holiday item. Today we had to wear an ugly Christmas sweater. Mine said, Merry Christmas, you filthy animal. Um, and <laughs> tomorrow is holiday headwear, and we will pass out wristbands, holiday wristbands. Again, my email is alexmariegate at gmail.com if you need me or want to share any ideas for student council. Thank you. It is a strong... It, Principal Fleming, they, they, that student council has been strong for so long. They just really, and they connect with the principal there, and they really look forward to that. They, they, it's just a really neat thing to have, and we, we're very blessed. Yeah, yeah, it's great. It's, it's a lot of fun. Super, super people. Um, Denise, anything you want to add today? Or no, the Fender School or anything? Share anything? No, nothing? Okay. Uh, Principal, how about you? But there is just, uh, they were going over the repair system, the testing to do to get the fence built and everything out, and they were just preparing to do it. And I had all my little notes, and I swear I put them in this way. I think it was the social studies or something that was going to be discussed here with this year. But the kids, not in the building, taking life. And they're trying to find out what that group was doing, what that group was doing. They asked me and they testified to it. I, I don't remember anything else from that night. I remember that because I was like, wow. So they are all working together to try to find out who got, who, what they did, what the team did, and share the work. Well, please share with you know, the principal and answer. Good to see your school get on the front and cover. You know, that, that's a good thing, too. So any, any kind of marketing and things like that help, always helps the school and helps the principal. So, yeah, please share that with them. Brittany, how about you? Anything you want to add? You are a busy, busy teacher, and we thank you for all you give to the world as well. That's important. Ms. Ryan, anything you want to add? And we want to thank you as another teacher. He's your teacher too, right? Yeah, so we want to thank all you guys for what you've done. And uh, it's amazing. Um, and you said it right. It's been three years of craziness, and we're hoping this next hump will be the last hump to get back to some center of normalcy. And um, take every bit of your holiday and enjoy the break, enjoy what you've ter deserved and earned, and get re-energized again, because this is come July or January again, and uh, we will not have a meeting in January. We meet in February, so, you know, again, we want to wish you and your families all the best, and thank you again for all your leadership and what you do. Councilman, you want to add? Well, I'll just mention one thing. You, yep. you, you mentioned um, about the, uh, the magazine, Royal Palm Beach Magazine, uh, and it, I think it's a an interesting indication of the importance of education in Royal Palm Beach. There have been four editions of that magazine. On the cover of two of those four were our schools. And I think that says a lot for uh, this community and how much it values its schools and the quality of the schools and you all who lead our schools. So thank you very much for that. Listen, they, they, put, they put Jesus on it first. We had nowhere to go but up. <laughs> Principal Fleming, welcome to the family. Principal Romano, Charles, thank you very much. And uh, have a great holiday, everybody. Okay, this meeting is a. Oh, wait, I got to. I know, I forgot. I know, I know, I know. Jeez. Thank you. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yes. Yes, do I have a motion? Do I have a second? Second. Okay. All in favor say yay. All right. All opposed? Am I good? <laughs> Let's go home.